Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Welcome back to the Why Not 3 podcast, and today I want to talk about stoicism, and most importantly about how I interpret stoicism. Now, in the beginning, the way I got to know stoicism was through one of my coaching clients. I kind of this is what I thought of stoicism before I met him, which was that you think really negatively, for instance, I'm going to die tomorrow. And that kind of gives you perspective, which then opens you to kind of avoid emotions and be more aware and happy with what you have now. Now, I didn't really like that way of thinking about it just because I always promote will balance a complaint for world speech and I don't like thinking about what if I die tomorrow, I don't like thinking negative thoughts and most of the time after reflection I realized the reason I don't do that is simply because I've had a very tough childhood so far and then everything that happened with my family and everything I felt like it was enough negativity for a lifetime and that's why I kind of try to avoid negativity and focus on the positive. That's why with those preconceived notions, I kind of avoided stoicism. But since I've been helping this coaching client, I realized that stoicism could be so much more than that. And most importantly, the way I use stoicism is to challenge myself and to take more risks. Now, one of the challenges that I faced once I became an entrepreneur full time was that you have these ups and downs in your business. Sometimes people are on a vacation and business isn't going well, and then you kind of the depend on the cash flow that you have, which is fine, except that it's always kind of a break in momentum. And that's something I don't appreciate. And then you start thinking negative thoughts, of course. What if momentum doesn't come back? What if something falls through? Now, with all the technology innovations, every time we're pivoting so much in the business just to keep up with everything. And we're still not at the stage, obviously, where we're the front leaders because at this point you need something really cool if you want to stay ahead of the curve. And being ahead of the curve doesn't mean that you're going to stay there for long because of how fast everything innovates. So pivoting is one of the most important parts in entrepreneurship, but pivoting comes with its negative downsides because you never know where you have to pivot to. Pivoting also costs money. You need to start producing new products, start doing market research again, seeing if it resonates with your client. And after a while, you can do it fast enough, but it comes with a lot of negative thoughts, especially when momentum around summer vacation goes slow and then we have to go into other countries, new markets, explore other things. And that's where stoicism helps me. Because before that, I was just worrying, what if, what if this would happen, what if that would happen, and I wouldn't think that reflection through. I wouldn't go deeper into why am I thinking like that. Sometimes I would realize the reason I'm thinking like that is because of the rough past that I've had, but that isn't a solution to fixing those thoughts. It would just be an acceptance, a reflection of, I understand where it's coming from, but I can't stop it. And stoicism, at least that part of stoicism, fixed that for me, or at least not really fixed that, but gave me a solution to that. And for instance, one of the thoughts that always pops up, even though we have more than enough cash flow, is what if we don't find enough clients to last us the year? Or what if right now everything is going good, but what if in two months something doesn't happen? And I know it's not the perfect way because you can't complain and everything, but If you're an entrepreneur and you're listening, then you know that if you're at the top of your organization, whether it's 100 people or 10 people, it's always scary because those are the parts that you don't reveal to your team. So one of the things that I wanted to share as an example today was I used to come from a sales background. So that's how I got into it. That's how that's also how I got enough confidence in my entrepreneurship skills because I knew that worst case I would go on the streets and sell because that's what I used to do. I used to work for charity organizations, uh, recruiting clients for them uh, door to door on the streets, B2B and so on. But the more successful my companies are becoming and the bigger our sales are becoming, the more I'm starting to get worried about that. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back on the streets selling, especially the bigger the companies become, 
the more virtual everything is. I automate everything. I do have an office and I do have employees coming to the office, but I try to keep everything virtual. Everything has to be location independent because that way it helps us pivot into new markets if I decide to go, for instance, tomorrow to Amsterdam or if I decide to go to Paris or I decide to go to New York. Being location independent helps me a ton, but the downside of that is obviously that you start becoming more introverted. And naturally, I am very shy and introverted, and the way I got out of that is by doing years and years of social dynamics, which is I would go up to strangers and just talk to them, for instance, like in that sales job. That's actually the reason why I got that job, to develop those skills, to get enough quantity to have pattern recognition and to be able to talk to people and so the bigger my companies grow the more I start worrying of going back to that going back to not having money not having a family not having friends even though I've built up in the last eight years all of those things and so one of the stories that I read in stoicism that kind of gave me a solution was that if you're scared of this one thing maybe you should start doing it more Try it out once a month and just take the teeth away of the fear that that memory has. And one of the ways that I fixed that, which you can actually see today, I launched it on a YouTube channel, was we took a camera and I took somebody from the Why Not 3 team and we went outside and started asking random people just questions. Questions about work-life balance, how they feel about it, and just relevant things that we thought our YouTube audience would like. And this kind of grounded me. This gave me perspective again on that it's not that scary. It's like it's not fun, of course. You have to get used to it. Uh, we used to do this exercise called state shifting where you have to change your state of being into a more social one. Especially if you're running a location independent company, then you're almost always behind your laptop. That is not a social state. And so you have to state shift to get into the social state. But this little exercise these YouTube videos that is partially how I applied stoicism into my life going out taking out that fear and making sure that it doesn't have such a strong hold on me and I think slowly but surely I started interpreting stoicism that way to do certain things that I am scared of that give me fear and just do that instead of eating super good and healthy food all the time I would go on a day, and this I got from Tim Ferriss, I would go on a day of eating rice with lamb or something like that. Stuff that I used to eat when I was a student, something low budget, not too expensive. And in the beginning, for instance, hunger was one of the scary things for me. What if I wouldn't have enough money for food? This is one of the most important parts that almost in every speech that I talk to where startups are present, I always say this where if you're scared for getting your food on the table, you're going to make sales. But that fear used to be genuine for me. That was really scary. And I also don't want to go back to that. And how I kind of fixed that one is I just started fasting. I just took a day where I just I would work and I wouldn't eat anything and feel what it's like to be hungry. And you know what? It's not that scary. And I guess... I wanted to make this podcast to give you a realization that sometimes those memories that you have are maybe not that scary and it could be good for instance to actually go out and do that thing that you're scared about and not in some cruel way or some quote way like everybody that says do one thing every day that scares you but more in a way of if it's really consuming you and you're having nightmares or you're sleeping bad or you're just thinking about it. Maybe it's good, for instance, that you once a month go and do something like that. Maybe once a month you go and you help the homeless just so that you know and see that being homeless, like it's scary, of course, but you're not going to die if you become homeless. And hopefully maybe you'll even find a solution to get out of it really quickly. But the most important part that I want you to remember is that at least you would have lived that day or experienced people that are living that day, maybe help those people out a little bit, but the memory that you have would have a smaller hold over you. I think that experience alone would be very good for your inner health, kind of slow down everything a little bit, make you relax and reflect, and just in general, make you more happy. And instead of 
thinking about you're gonna die tomorrow which is just an abstract kind of exercise that for practical people like me like i i don't want to think about it because it doesn't help me it's not practical but actually doing something that does help me something that i am scared of something that the bigger i grow i get more scared to fall down maybe it's good to actually just go and fall down for a second and see that it's not that bad and that you've gotten out of it once you will do it again or maybe if you're listening and you didn't get out of it yet there's a big chance that you will get out of it and at the end of the day if you're really struggling just reach out to us because we always try to help almost everybody that emails us if we have enough time but that being said that is actually it for today we're trying to come back with the why not three podcast we've launched this week with our daily why not three show so hopefully we'll be doing these podcasts every week on a saturday and i'll be talking about videos that i've done that are going good and need more explanation and i'll try to adapt this format most of the time and i hope you'll like it if you do leave a review let me know and i'll see you in the next podcast